like incredible acclaim, and now it's coming out into the world and, and opening uh, November 20th. This project has a long gestation period. It really has been 15 years in the making from when Phyllis Nagy wrote the first draft of the script, the adaptation from Patricia Highsmith's novel, The Price of Salt. And then Elizabeth Carlson shepherded it over the last four or five years. We had to wait for Rooney to be born. We did. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Kate. <laughs> well, that's funny that you should say that because I think a lot of the themes of the movie, not only are the gender part of this film, but also the, the age difference too. And it's, it's interesting, you know, because it's about relationships in many different ways than just the gender thing. And I, I think the age is, is part of that too. Don't you think so, uh, Kate? In terms of uh, yes, I mean, I, I think that a big part of it is, and what I, what I find really beautiful in Phyllis's screenplay is that she's really brought out this undertone in the, the novel about the nature of heartbreak and that really in terms of, in, in order to deeply, truly love in a way that doesn't involve narcissism or, or projecting onto something, someone, um, your object of your desire, your own sort of um, solipsistic obsession, that you have to be, you have to go through heartbreak to maturity. You know, and I think that that's, that's really, you know, what, what Todd's brought out. But, but definitely, I mean, one of my favorite moments in the film is, the, is um, that last moment with Rooney where you, you remember this kind of cult-like um, sort of picture of inexperience and suddenly you're utterly transformed and watching you... I mean, I fell in love with you. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but, it, I mean, it was, it's such a beautiful, subtle kind of journey to, um, that, that, you, you, that Rooney um, charts. It is in the whole movie, you know, set in, what, 1952, Todd? 52 to 53. 52, this, when this novel, when this book was written, clearly could not have been made as the film that you've made today, then. It took so long, wow, 60 years to get to the screen. And what's so interesting is it sort of hit the zeitgeist in a lot of ways. It's, so, it's got such relevance yeah. to today still. No. Rooney, it's so many great silences too. Not done with dialogue, but just like the essence of screen acting to me, you know, through the eyes. And there's so much of that in this. And I know you've heard this 150 times since this film debuted, but you remind everybody of the young Audrey Hepburn of that. <laughs> Which is a huge compliment, yeah. as you know. Yeah. So talk about taking on this role of Therese and, uh, and working with Kate and creating that kind of chemistry that you guys have here. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, I was really excited to do it, not only because, um, you know, it was obviously a dream to get to work with Kate, and I really wanted to work with Todd, but I was sort of wanting to do this. It was very different than anything I had done before, and um, I loved all, all of those, the, the sort of silent and nuanced moments that were in the script, but they were also quite scary because there were a lot of times where I felt like, oh, I don't feel, really feel like I'm doing enough or I'm not really doing anything. Um, but I sort of just had to trust that, that Todd would let me know if I needed to do more. Indeed, yeah. You, how you develop this kind of relationship on film and make it so believable, because I don't think you guys, I know for a fact, you, you really didn't know each other. We did a tribute at Santa Barbara Film Festival. Yes. And Rooney came yes. to present you the award, and you told me, I'm doing a movie with her. I'm just meeting her tonight. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was... Yeah, it was, it was great. You said nice things about me, so I, 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 I meant and you would be I fine. <laughs> but I mean, we had, I mean, the film was like a lot of great films that are around uh, this 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 year. You know, they've made in a wing and a prayer and with a lot of passion. And but but like Todd, you know, I, I, I think Rooney's makes not only the choices of films and the directors that you've you've chosen to to work with, but the way you've navigated them. Um, I you know I uh, I don't know I thought found us sort of simpatico with those sort of creative and aesthetic choices. And I think the best way to get to know someone is to work on something. You know, you can, you can talk yourself, uh, you know, to be blue in the face, but you, once you start doing it, and a, lo a lot of what happens to Carol and Therese is this, they have this volcanic, um, uncontrollable feelings for one another, but they're processed and dealt with and, and sort of stewing away um, separate from one another. 
And so we had several quite long scenes together and it was always such a relief to find that, you know, to sit opposite one another and either speak or not speak. And, um, and, and, and I think it just, we just, we just got, on, got on with it. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't have, I mean, this being an independently produced movie, you didn't have a whole lot of takes, right? Or a lot of uh, time to uh, keep doing it over and over? But, but, some, uh, but Todd is, I mean, you're such a great collaborator and you really in, invite everybody um, and, and everybody on, on, on the set into the kind of the visual language in the world. So everyone feels like participant and and it felt like you were right there with us every step of the way. So it, 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 in, in a way, we'd imbibed a lot of the atmosphere and we were, it felt like everyone was really, we didn't necessarily know how it was gonna run, but, but we were all on the same page, yeah. you know. Um, and Rooney, I, I just wanna ask you too, did you refer to the book a lot? You know, cause obviously as an actor, you have that book to go back to, which has a lot of the interior life, particularly in this case, of the characters, did that help you as an actor? Yeah, I mean, it has all of the interior life. Um, you know, the entire book is written from Therese's point of view, so it was, uh, if ever I was lost, I, I, I always went back to the book because uh, her, her entire stream of consciousness is basically in there, and um, yeah, it was really, really helpful to have that. I know, me, at, at the end of this movie, you know, in that scene, I go like, okay, so what happened to them after? What happened? And I, I just wished the best for you too. I just, I did. I, <laughs> I hope that all, it doesn't always work out. But you know, what do you think? What do you think happened? Or don't you want to know? You know, I, I didn't ever move beyond that moment. I did think a lot about what would have happened to Carol if Therese hadn't shown up. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, there's a, did I make this up hard? I, I'm so jet lagged and delirious. <laughs> but isn't that the, at the end of the, at the novel, isn't there kind of a little postscript where she talks about, but Highsmith talks about following the woman that she kind of but loosely based Carol on. I I, I've think, made that up? No, but it's in the biography. Oh, okay, there we go. And, yeah. and, she, and she tamped at, at Bloomingdale's for a, for a Christmas season on the doll floor. And this incredibly handsome, elegant woman walked in one day and asked to help her buy a gift for her daughter for Christmas. And uh, it's, it's inspired the whole story. But uh, she, followed she followed her, she kept the address. And even after Strangers on a Train came out and her career got solidified and she continued on, she kept it and she traced it back and, and hid in the bushes <laughs> and, and watched, watched drink the you. house. And we, we yeah. did riff on that in the film. Yeah. And that scene that's really from Carol's point of view. Because mm. I had a scene early on in the script where we were with Therese outside the house. Yeah. But then it kind of shifted. And this was your mm. idea. Was it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to make that scene of her and Abby that is such a pivotal scene in the film. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And to have a car. <laughs> a good idea. Right? <laughs> And to have that car come up the drive and freak them out. Yeah. And make their sense of safety and, you know, being surveyed or whatever, you know, in yeah. doubt afterwards. But, but that's a really yeah. a big turning point in the, in the story because it's really where Carol's reassessing the value of Therese in her mm. life. But, you know, I did, I did wonder whether, you know, you hear about those, tr those terrible tragedies where the people you least suspect suddenly quietly suicide one day. And you think, I had no idea that was going on, and I thought, well, Carol was probably be, a con she's sitting on so much stuff. I thought, you know, she might be one of those people. Until she found. Yeah, so it can only be better than that at the end of the movie. All right, that's a good ending. We like that. All right, so we have some, uh, this is for Kate. What's your um, biggest fear as an actress? You seem fearless. <laughs> My biggest fear? Um, I, I always find the first day on set or in the rehearsal room t terrifying and I always poke my husband at about 3 a.m. and say, what, what's my process? Do I have a process? What, 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 what do I do? I mean, we're gonna do, are we gonna do, we're gonna do a table read tomorrow. I mean, what are people, it's always like it's never happened before. So it's, um, you know, it's, I think it's because you have to risk not 
knowing and not knowing how to do it. And it's through being in conversation with everybody. It's not about, you know, of course you do your preparation. And that's part of, you know, a, gr a great, in le I, I derive an enormous amount of enjoyment about researching around a part and preparing. But it's irrelevant. It has to, it's a dialogue. It's, a, it's not a monologue. Um, you know, even if it's your close-up, you're still in dialogue with the, you know, with the memory of what the other actors d has done. If you can't, if they're not behind, it's beside the camera, or it's still to the camera crew, still to Todd. It's, it's a dialogue. So it, you, um, I think it's always the fear of not being able to. That I've bitten off more than I can chew this time, and I think the more you do, um, the the kind of the more that's expected of you in a way, <laughs> and so the more you have to risk <laughs> up. <laughs> Can you? I, 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 can I ask you about working with Todd Haynes? Because you worked with him before. You may. Yes, you worked with him before and played uh, wonderful. You got an Oscar nomination, actually. Uh, yes, so I thought I'd go in a second time. <laughs> <laughs> Playing what is really Bob Dylan uh, and a, a male role. And uh, you know, what was it about Todd Haynes that made you want to jump into one of his movies? Then, because you'd probably seen a few of his earlier films too, I imagine. Oh yeah, I, mean, I was an unabashed, uh, drooling, drooling f fan. Um, and one of my all-time moments of professional jealousy was when a fellow Australian, Tony Collette, got to, I was like, my God, she's working with Todd Haynes on Velvet <laughs> Goldmine. So I'd long wanted to work with Todd, but it, it was the insanity of the ask, I think, that was just so good to be asked to play Bob Dylan. I mean, it was just, just okay. <laughs> <laughs> But we sat, we, we sat and, and, and it was just this, this kind of this scrapbook thing and I, it was something I really relate to. I'm constantly tearing in images out of magazines or referencing paintings or, you, you know, it, it, I, I'm very visually stimulated It's because it bypasses your psychology and connects <laughs> something deeper and it, I'm really connected with Todd on that level. And, 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 and then when you, you, know, you emailed me and said, are you still interested in doing this? I went, of course. It was like a real eu eureka moment. And that's when the film took momentum. It was a complete no-brainer. Wow. Todd, what was it that made you think of Kate as Bob Dylan? <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching what Kate has been doing in film for so many years. And I, but I also was, I was tearing out pictures and looking at you, I had to look at, I wanted to see you, and I could see it. I saw it. But the thing about that performance is that it's so much more than that. And she brings this depth and this three-dimensionality to that guy. And this sort of loneliness, this sort of lurking isolation that he also was feeling at the same time. So it's, it just works on so many profound levels, and that is what you know, only Kate but, could have done. But, but something that Rooney and I have been talking a lot about, we've been doing a lot of talking in the last few, few days, but is this, there's no, you have such a discerning eye, Todd, but there's no judgment in it. There's, it's, it's all part of the process, and it's sort of, in a way, it's, it's, it, it, it is utterly liberating. And I remember the first, the first day on Dylan thing, we were doing um, photos, really, for, yeah. um, um, and we were just sort of, I thought, okay, I'm gonna give this a go. And you got your excitement at kind of, okay, we're starting. It was so, it was so um, contagious, you know, that suddenly everyone was really excited about it. And so then we went deeper and further and more and more. And I, the same thing, even though Carol's, a, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so delicate and fragile emotionally and psychologically, there was still that same sense of investment and, it, and, and um, lack of judgment in a really constructive way that was, um, you know, that only you can create that atmosphere. It's, it's cool, I've talked to you before, and you said you had such a, you used the word simpatico with Rooney immediately. You, you two sort of like connected Didn't right we? away. <laughs> Rooney, do you, well, talk about that a little bit. Tell us, you know, on that set, and, and it's sort of magic when it happens too, I guess, too, but what was it, the connection that you, you had here? Oh, I don't know, I mean, I don't even think, you know, you can get a, I don't think you really know if the chemistry is going to work until you've seen the film. I mean, I I didn't know cuz you know, you can you can adore someone to no end, but you don't know what the camera is going to see. Um, we were lucky that we had these two weeks in Cincinnati of rehearsal and 
we were able to just sort of sit around a table for those two weeks and and read through the script and get to know each other a little bit and and form that trust um, that Kate was talking about and so that when we got to set we were able to just um, try anything and everything without fear of embarrassment or looking foolish and um, yeah. Jake, what about you? I'm just curious, coming onto this set with Todd Haynes